Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, welcome on this uh, third Sunday of Easter, April 14th, uh, 2024. Uh, what a great word we have today for you as we rest upon the certainty of God and His Word, the proclamation of repentance and forgiveness uh, for the apostles, but also for us today as we continue to preach uh, the living Word of Christ. Uh, those who are at home, uh, God's blessings to you this day. Uh, may this word also go well with you. Uh, let us begin now uh, with our opening hymn, hymn number 464. Continue with uh, confession and absolution on page 167. Uh, please rise as you are able. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins... God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, 
Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Were and riches and wisdom and strength Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns, with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Please be seated. <clears throat> now let's continue with our readings of Holy Scripture. Uh, the first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 3. While the lame man who was now healed clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them, in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murder to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke.
by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's continue with our responsive reading of the Psalms, uh, Psalm chapter 4, which is in the front of your hymnal, Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have given me relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. But know that the Lord has set apart the godly for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us some good? Lift up the light of your face upon us, O Lord. You have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The epistle reading this morning is from uh, the book of 1 John, chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, We are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who thus hopes in Him purifies himself as He is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that He appeared to take away sins, and in Him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able for our holy gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them, and he said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me. And see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with the power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. This time let us confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed uh, found on page 175. (coughs) 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Uh, please be seated at this time. If we could have the uh, children come up for our children's message. Morning, everyone. Morning. How are we doing today? Good. Good? Morning, Aaron. I like your bus. Very good. All right. I have a question for you. Now, this is a question I don't think anyone knows off the top of their head, so I don't expect you to know it. Are you, are you ready for the question, though? Yeah. You sure? It's a terribly difficult one. But let's see how it goes, right? Ramona, you ready? Thank you for the flowers, by the way. They're nice. All right. What does it say right there? How many words do you hear in one week? How many words do you hear in one week? What's your guess? In number form. Well, yeah, it would be in number form. But how many words do you hear a week? Take a guess. How many words do you hear in one week? How many words do you hear? Any guesses? And I don't expect you to get the right answer either, so. Infinity. Infinity. Oh, your dad. <laughs> Does he talk a lot at home? Oh, he, oh, we won't open that door, will we, today, right? <laughs> that's, that's close, but it, that, that means... That'd be like talking every minute of the day, including when you're sleeping, right? Um, but what's another number? Any, any guess? One. One. Oh, so there is no talking at your house. I'm the only talking person in my family. All right. So we have infinity and one. I, I did not expect you guys to go from that to that. But studies have shown, and this is just uh, an, a, an estimate, a guess, that every day uh, we hear around 30,000 words. So one day is 30,000. So one week, and I don't expect you to know the math, there would be how many right there? 210,000 words a week. Now the question is, out of those 210,000 words, what, what are we hearing, right? Words, right? Words from uh, school, right? Words uh, from our baseball coach, <laughs> words from our parents, words on the, what else? On the TV, maybe? Your favorite movie, your favorite TV show, words on the news, uh, words from your brother or sister. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We hear many words. But my question is for you as, you, as you come to church today, what are the words that you hear at church? Yes. Jesus and God. Yes, good answer. Right? Yes. The Lord. The Lord. Now, out of the two, 210,000 words, you know, I think a lot of times we don't, if we really put this out on a number, I wonder how many words would be of Jesus. And I think that's why it's so important that you're here today. Because at church, not only do we hear about Jesus, but first we hear about the law. We hear the word that shows us our sin, right? The word shows us that we are sinners. And there we, what do we do this morning? We confess our Sin. sins. Good. And the Lord doesn't leave us there, does he? He gives us the words of for. 
forgiveness, right? He gives you the words of forgiveness. And that forgiveness is the words of Jesus, who died on the cross for your sins and who rose on the third day to say, that's right, Charlotte Bennett. I was going to call you Abe, but Elliot, <laughs> Avery, Ramona, and Valerie, of course, the one and only Aaron, you are forgiven. And how do you know you're forgiven? Because this is the word of Christ. And you can be certain of that. You are forgiven. Why? Because Jesus died and he rose and he says to you, all your sins are washed away. There is no question. And this is the word that you need to hear. And that's why you're here. Right? How old are you, Charlotte? Nine. Nine. Even when you're 90. I know that's a long ways off. But even then, this is the word that you're going to hear. Because you and I both, we always need to hear the greatest word of this 210,000 is who? Jesus and what he's done for each and every one of you. So go now in God's peace. Go now forgiven. Because that you are, children of God, paid for by the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your word that through all things you give us the greatest gift of Christ. Bless these children always in your word, in your forgiveness, that all their sins are washed away. Lord, lead them and guide them always in your grace. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Go back to your seats. Now let's continue with um, our sermon hymn, hymn number 483. The sermon for the uh, third week of Easter is from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 24, verses 36 to 49. Uh, the sermon is entitled, Proclaiming Certainty. 
Gracious and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Indeed, this week uh, we had our monthly pastor circuit meeting uh, for circuits uh, one and two in the Pacific Southwest District. And of course, it was uh, my turn to host here uh, at the meeting here at Faith. And, you know, at every pastor's meeting, it's such a great joy to be with the guys as we study the scriptures, but also a time of receiving the word and sacrament. So anytime there's a host, uh, the pastor preaches. And based on the reading from last week's uh, uh, first reading of the book of Acts, as we remember that the apostles preached with great power, they preached with the assurance, with certainty, with the power of the resurrection. And thus they preached boldly with great assurance, for the strife was indeed over, as a battle has been won. You know, this is the certainty of our proclamation. And I reminded the pastors, the word is sufficient. There is nothing more. This is our boldness. This is our certainty. But of course, the devil tempts us, casting doubt on this proclamation as if there was something more than just preaching repentance and forgiveness. And even for the church here at Faith, I think in our ever-changing wor world, it is, it is our urge to keep up with the times, to stay relevant, to be hip, right, as they say in Bible study. That somehow we can, you know, bring this assurance, this certainty, we can grow the church in so many ways possible, even to the point of straying from the assurance and the certainty of God's word, replacing God's word with smoke and mirrors. Anything to stay relevant, anything to somehow, by our own power, grow those very numbers. Yes, at first it seems like a, a well-intentioned way, yet we subtly shift from the very words of certainty that faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of Christ. Yes, we want in our nature something innovative, something new, right, to the itching ear, all in the hopes of finding some comfort, some assurance, some certainty that we can bring to the table even for the church. And, you know, I think about evangelism, right? You know, this text, is very, this text that we hear today is very uh, missional, right? It's, it's, a, it's a call to witness, a call to mission. And rather than trusting in the certainty of God's word, that his word will not return void, that his word, his will is done... This is our certainty, yet when we go out to tell people about Jesus, what happens? We start to shake. We start to doubt. We start to second guess our words as if we somehow bring something more to the table rather than trusting in the certainty of God's word. And there we find ourselves discouraged. As the devil says, yeah, that's right, you're not good enough. Stop that. No longer do you outreach because it simply doesn't work. I think today in our gospel text, whether it is the pastor, the church, the evangelism field, or even our daily life in this faith, we are certainly reminded of his word and the certainty that this word gives. You know, Jesus confirms to his disciples, not just any confirmation, but that in this resurrected Lord, the resurrection, Jesus was standing in their midst. And he says, touch me and see. Not only that, but he also ate with them. And in this reality, profound as it was for the disciples, Jesus proceeds to teach them. 
These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, Jesus says, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. He was taking them back to all that he had taught them before his death. In his life of ministry, he was, he was looking back to all that he had taught them. And there in their midst, there was the victor. There was the king, resurrected, basically saying, I told you what I would do, and now I am here with you. <coughs> After the cross, here I am in the resurrection. This is certainty, my friends. And now Jesus would continue. And I love this part of the scriptures. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. I think this is, this is our certainty. That our Lord opens our minds to the word. In other words, Jesus needed to open our minds to the word. It implies that we, by nature, are what? The opposite. That we are closed. And this is true. Ever since the fall, everything was closed. And therefore, we say in the third article of the Creed, I believe that I cannot, by my own human reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to Him. Everything is closed Due to sin, I cannot by my own power or by my own strength or open my mind somehow. No, we are closed shut. Sin and separation is our lot. And how indeed, how powerless we truly are. We are powerless. And this is the great deception, my friend. You know, that's why, you know, when we, when we speak of evangelism, is, it is of great joy. Because it's not about you and me. It's solely about resting upon the certainty and the power of Christ and His Word. Right? And as we connect that to our life of faith, you know, the great deception is that we somehow have that power. That we have that strength. That we, that we have the ability to somehow open our hearts and minds to the Lord. And the fact is, we cannot. You know, I might say I decided, I chose, I commit. You know, all these I words subject to the verb. But it's in these very statements that, well, we tell ourselves that we have the ability to open ourselves up to Scripture. It's as if we can convince ourselves that we have the power to undo the floodgates of the fall. Right? Speaking of floodgates, the rain has started. <laughs> and how foolish this sounds, doesn't it? Right? You know, we, we think we have this power. We think we can open our minds to the scriptures. Yet in our sin, we cannot. We need this word to be opened to us. And it always reminds me of Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Where there, this well-learned Jew, he knew the law. Yet at the end of the day, it was Jesus who taught him. The wind blows where it wishes and, you're, uh, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Holy Spirit. In other words, this is the work of God to open you to the scriptures, to open you to the certainty and the promise that has brought you into this faith. And that's the beauty of our faith, is that certainty resides in what God has done for us. You know, the sacraments, holy baptism, this is not your doing. No, this is the work of God upon you, wrapping you in His robe, wrapping you in the righteousness of His grace. This is where He opened to you the very word by this very gift of faith as He baptized you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yes, indeed, you were brought into this faith. And I tell you this honestly as a pastor, I think my greatest pitfall is to think that I can bring something to the table to rescue and save the church. 
The devil always tells me, you are the Christ. You do it. Jesus is not enough. You know, I think, you know, when we think about this life of faith and our trust, you know, this is our great temptation. You know, we have the word. We have this bold promise that we, we have Christ and, and what he has done for us in, our, in his death and resurrection, yet we find ourselves reverting back to our flesh, to this thing we call self-trust. You know, our Lord opens us to the scriptures, yet at the same time, our nature says what? Close ourselves. Close off from the scriptures. Go your own way, right? When you're speaking this gospel to those that need to hear it, there you leave it. God is working. Yet in our nature, what do we say? I hope I said the right thing. I hope I can win them over. I hope, I hope I've done enough. And even in your Christian life, you know, when you are called to do so many things in life, how burdensome it becomes. And trust me, this is real for all of us. You know, today Jesus calls us to his very word, the proclamation of certainty. And that is simply the call to the church to preach repentance and forgiveness. To preach certainty, the certainty that is only of Christ and his word. And there the Lord will command the apostles to do this very thing. You know, repentance is something that I think our nature does not want to address. We just want to live as we desire. And, you know, we want to hear all the good things and just kind of go by our own way. Yet the call of repentance is very humbling. And by this very word we are called to acknowledge our sins, to shed ourselves from that self-righteous charade, to strip ourselves from our own trusts. Of course, the old Adam says otherwise, but here you are in the word as God calls you to repentance. Remember, there are 210,000 words you hear in a week. And there are many words that are trying to tear you away from God and his promises. But now is the time to hear the word that you need to hear. And that is the call to repentance. That we are poor, miserable sinners. You know, the word, the world of the world, the words of the world will not tell you this. But indeed, we are beggars. We are broken. We are closed from his word. And after a long week, this is the word that you need to hear. And thus in faith, we confess our sins. The Lord is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is our assurance, my friends, that when we do confess our sins, we're not wondering if we are forgiven. You know, repentance doesn't just leave us there on our own little island of guilt and shame and, and wondering if we have measured up. No, repentance shows clearly that we are fallen, we are broken, but there is Christ. <clears throat> this is what it means to proclaim certainty. <clears throat> this is your assurance. That your forgiveness has been won, your forgiveness delivered, your forgiveness by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, your sins are indeed forgiven. Jesus doesn't leave us alone and says, you figure it out yourself. No, he gives you certainty. There with the disciples, he shows them great assurance. I am here with you. I've done all that I said, and I've delivered you from the darkness of death. And in the same way, he gives you this word. Out of the 210,000 words that you hear in this week, what is the most life-giving? What is it? It's here right now. 
the forgiveness of all your sins. You know, Jesus, He died in your place. He stood in your place. He, he is your atonement. You know, when we, we speak of death and, and resurrection, when we speak of the promise and the deliverance, it is Jesus who conquered sin and death for you. No, there's nothing in this world can, that can give you this certainty. No, no degree, no, no status, no place in this world can give you the assurance and the certainty that our Lord gives. And this is the word that you need to hear. From repentance to forgiveness. This is not just a platitude or a feel-good moment. No, rather, this is where we proclaim that the grave has been opened that death has been defeated, and indeed you are forgiven. Friends, if your guilt is burdening you this day and you're wondering if you are forgiven, you are. Because your forgiveness is given to you by Christ alone. His bloody sacrifice. He is not here. He has risen. And there you stand in victory. As this word gives you the certainty. Yes, the devil may shake this assurance. And he says, no, are you sure? Yes, we say. The empty tomb speaks for us. For where there is forgiveness, there is eternal life and salvation. So take heart, my friends. Rest upon this very word. As you live, move, and have your being in Christ Jesus, as you love and serve your neighbors, as you give the words to your neighbor who needs to hear the words of Christ, yet you seem like it's a lost cause, have no fear. Continue. Because the word is our certainty and that Jesus Christ died for sinners. He died for you. His death and resurrection for the forgiveness of your sins. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, uh, as it is a time of offering, we'll have the elder uh, passing around the plate. If you have not done so, if you've prepared an offering, please place it in the plate. Also, pl prayer cards as well. Uh, place those in the plate as well. Uh, for those who are at home, uh, please use the proper applications as we give to the Lord with great joy, knowing that uh, He has given us all that we have. Thanks be to God for His merciful hand as He continues uh, to bless us um, in body and soul. Before we begin, are there any other additional prayers today? Yes. Um, I have multiple. Um, I'd like to pray for Mary, of course, um, and for peace and assurance during uh, her, her trials. Um, I'd like to pray for my friend Heather and her husband, Eric, who is uh, currently 
in the process of passing away from multiple organ failure at the hospital. Um, so for safe passage for him um, and peace for her. Mm. And then I have my prayers of thanksgiving for my mother, whose birthday was yesterday. All right, also, uh, prayer cards, yes. Oh, we have quite a bit today, very good. Um, uh, from, uh, from the pains uh, for Amy? Yeah, Amy, Amy. Uh, for Tara's cousin, uh, who is uh, Odu uh, with their fourth child any day now, uh, definitely prayers uh, for for safety and for baby and mother. Also for uh, Rich, Urania, Nick, and Vicky as we continue to pray for them uh, for their bouts with cancer. Also for Uncle Danny from the Young family, uh, as, he, as we know he's facing Alzheimer's. Also for Jerry, uh, who is in a uh, hospital with complications from cancer. Also for Tina, uh, as we continue to pray for her, as she also is uh, dealing with cancer. Also from the Gavin family, uh, that's right, uh, Praise God for Scott, who is celebrating his birthday. Very good. Uh, definitely praying uh, for, uh, in the midst of his, his health afflictions, uh, definitely praying uh, that God is uh, sustaining him this day. Amen. Also for Nina uh, from Rosa and Sheldon, as uh, she is having a uh, job interview, uh, definitely blessings for uh, daily bread and for opening of employment. Also safe travels for uh, Rosa and Sheldon next week as they are to travel. Uh, continued prayers uh, for... Uh, Annie and Bob, also for Tracy, who are uh, battling cancer. Also uh, uh, for Rick, uh, who, who was in the hospital for 10 weeks fighting liver cancer and diabetes. That's right. Definitely prayers for uh, endurance and strength for him. Also from Nancy, uh, uh, for, for her friend Cindy, uh, her brother Dan suffered a medical emergency and now is not expected to survive. Uh, definitely prayers for the family. Family of Gabe, who lost his battle with cancer this week. Also from Carrie, for Sherry Brightung, who's uh, post bone marrow a transplant and, and blood clots in the arm. So definitely prayers uh, uh, for, for, for guidance and, and, uh, and provision. Also uh, from Jennifer. Uh, for Catherine and Man Manuel, who are uh, both battling cancer. And lastly, for uh, Joyce and Nancy, Joyce Bovey and Nancy Danowski, uh, Nancy who is currently going through her treatments as of this week, uh, definitely prayers as she is home now uh, for rest. Uh, she has three weeks of rest and, and, now, and then she goes in for four more days of treatment after three weeks. So definitely prayers for Mark and Nancy as well this day. Um, also prayers for Dave, Ander Dave Anderson as he is going as he's recovering from pneumonia. Um, also, uh, prayers for Carol Trolia as she again suffered another fall. Oh, no. So um, she's okay, but definitely uh, prayers for her safety um, in, her next, in her next days. All right, let us continue. Uh, lastly, uh, we have prayers of the day uh, for our uh, April birthdays. Uh, today, uh, in this month, we celebrate Taylor. Um, Robert, uh, little Robert, also Les, uh, Patty, uh, Dwayne, Jan, uh, that's coming up, Chris as well, the clots, uh, Keith, and also uh, Richard Jenkins, who is turning 100 this year. So definitely, uh, thanks be to God for, for all the gifts of life. Let us pray. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, in your presence we find fullness of joy, and by your right hand, Christ Jesus, you win and deliver peace forevermore. In the midst of this world's sin and sorrows, give us peace in the knowledge of his salvation and confident hope in the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of his cross, you have made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. Sustain the preaching of your holy word and its message of repentance for the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name among us and all the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. give peace, 
Lord, to our homes and enliven them by Christ's resurrected life. Let the forgiveness of sins reign among husbands and wives, parents and children. Assure those who live alone that they too are your children, upheld by your right hand. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, preserve our nation and its leaders, especially Joseph, our president, Gavin, our governor. Preserve order and decency in this fallen world by their hands and restrain the sins and deceptions of the lawless that we may practice righteousness while awaiting the eternal peace promised in Christ's wounds alone. Lord, in your mercy. God of all comfort, you have compassion on those who are afflicted. Remember and have mercy on those whom we pray for, those who are in need. Lord, we pray uh, for Mary Beck. Uh, we pray just for continued assurance, guidance, that your will is done, that in the midst of, of the affliction of this temporal life, you may grant her your peace. Lord, as things unfold, uh, bless Mary and bless the family um, and, and grant them, um, provide for them and grant them your peace this day. Also uh, for Ashley's uh, friend, Heather, who is, uh, and Eric, who is near death, oh Lord, we just pray uh, that you may grant this family your peace in the midst of uh, what is to come. Uh, be with them in your word, and um, as he is near death, oh Lord, we, we pray for Heather, uh, that you may uh, grant her your peace at this time. Be with this family, and may your spirit guide them in the comfort of your truth. Also, uh, a thanksgiving uh, for, for Ashley's mothers who celebrates uh, a birthday today. Lord, be with her, and uh, grant her the joy of what you give by your merciful hand. Also, Lord, uh, this day, and we pray for Joyce um, as she continues to uh, fight the battle uh, of, of her body. Lord, be with her. And, and Lord, through all things, uh, may you grant her assurance that peace uh, is with her in Christ Jesus. Also for Nancy Donowski, who is uh, currently resting from her treatments this week, uh, be with Nancy and grant her uh, sustenance, uh, patience, endurance. Lord, may, may this treatment be well for her to rid her of her cancer. Lord, we just pray for Nancy and Mark that at this time uh, they, they, they find great peace in your will uh, that is of the gospel. Also, Lord, we pray for Catherine and Manuel continuously as they battle cancer. Lord, we, we know that this world, is our flesh, is wasting away. But Lord, we pray for Catherine and Manuel that you may grant them uh, your eternal peace in, in, in the promise of your very word of Christ. Also, Lord, we pray for Sherry, uh, who is uh, still uh, recovering from post bone marrow transplant as she is now facing blood clots in the arms. Lord, may these complications subside and grant healing uh, for Sherry as she meets the day ahead. Uh, bless the Bright Tongue family. And Lord, through all things, uh, Lord, grant them your wisdom and peace um, in this time. Also, Lord, we pray for Nancy Wagenbach's friend Cindy, whose brother Dan suffered a medical emergency and now is not expected to survive. Uh, Lord, be, be with this family. Be with Cindy. Lord, uh, bring this family to your word and that in the midst of suffering, uh, they rest upon the suffering of Christ on the cross. Lord, uh, be with them in this terrible time and Lord, uh, grant them comfort in the midst of grief. Also, Lord, the family of Gabe who, uh, who lost the battle of cancer this week, Lord, we pray for this family, O Lord, that in this time of great uh, sadness, Lord, uh, you may grant them uh, your grace and your peace um, in this time of loss. Also, Lord, uh, for, for Rick, or, or Rich, who, who is in the hospital for 10 weeks, uh, Lord, we, we just pray uh, that you may grant, uh, grant him continued uh, provisions, O oh Lord, this day. Lord, be with him, and Lord, uh, bless him in, in this bout, that as he fights, O oh Lord, uh, that you, you may continue to grant him your perseverance and the peace that your word endures forever. Also, prayers for, for Annie and Bob and also for Tracy, who is battling cancer. Uh, Lord, we know you hear our prayers, and, and for Annie, Bob, and Tracy, Lord, uh, be with them this day and grant them your comforts as um, you lead them in, in this sorrowful time. Also, Lord, for daily bread, for Nina, for, for the opening of a job, Lord, we pray that you may give her a peaceable heart, knowing that your will is done, and that if this is your will, uh, Lord, you will provide. Lord, bless Nina, O oh Lord, and, and grant her your peace this day. Also, for safe travels, for Sheldon and Rosa, as they are traveling down south this week, grant them protection and safety uh, to and from. Also, Lord, we just pray uh, for uh, Gavin's friend, Scott, 
uh, who is battling great afflictions uh, in, in his brain uh, of, of cancer. Lord, we just, uh, we just are thankful that you continue to grant him endurance this day as he is celebrating his birthday. Lord, lead him and guide him in your word and, and bring him uh, to the comfort of the cross and the resurrection. Be with him this day. And we just thank you uh, for continued uh, provisions for, for Scott. Also, uh, for Danny, uh, dealing with Alzheimer's disease, Lord, be with him in your strength and lead him always by the power of your Holy Spirit. For Jerry, uh, who is a bit facing complications from cancer, Lord, uh, Lord, in this time of great exhaustion and, and, and affliction, Lord, be with Jerry and grant him your strength and, and your, uh, your, your confidence in the certainty of the word. Also, Lord, for Tina, uh, who is battling cancer, Lord, uh, we pray uh, for, uh, for her continued strength this day. Also for um, Amy this week, Tara's cousin, who is uh, due for her for fourth child this week, we thank you, O Lord, for the gift of life. We pray for the mother and child that you may grant them your safety this day. Lord, we pray that the labor may be uh, safe, uh, that you may grant safety to all those who are involved and bless this family with what you give as you lead them and guide them uh, by your gracious uh, provisions as the creator of life. Also for Rich, Urania, Nick, and Vicky, who are all also facing cancer treatments. Lord, be with them this day. And as we continue to pray for them, Lord, bring them uh, to your word as you are the great physician, the Lord and giver of life. Also, Lord, we pray for Carol, who recently uh, fell this week. Lord, thanks be to God that you have brought her safely to this time. Lord, grant her recovery and, and give her the, the peaceable conscience as she is covered by your will. Also for Dave Anderson, Lord, uh, as he uh, continues to be on the mend, as he soon will be, Lord, be with him and his family as they, um, they are sick and, and healing at this time. Lord, grant them your uh, continued recovery this day. And lastly, O oh Lord, we pray for the gift of life for Taylor, Robert, Les, Patty, Dwayne, Jan, uh, Jan, Chris, Keith, and Richard. Lord, that you have continued to lead them in the one true faith as you have provided for them in body and soul. Bless them in this upcoming year and grant them great joy knowing full well that from you um, all blessings flow. For all those whom we prayed for this day, Lord, grant them and lead them always in your, in your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by your Son's crucifixion, all sins have been blotted out. Send us now the blessed refreshment of his bodily presence in the sacrament of the altar and make us fit partakers in repentance for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, uh, this is where uh, the live stream ends for those who are at home. Uh, may this word always go well with you proclaiming certainty, and at the end of the day, that is Jesus Christ for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Go now in boldness, go now in assurance, knowing that Christ died and rose for you. Amen. Amen. For those who are here, uh, please uh, place your hand on page 177 as I prepare the sacrament for you.